Hey guys, welcome back to another doll customizing video. In today's video, I will be showing you how I made a unicorn doll. I was really excited about making this doll because it is the first doll I'm going to be using epoxy. For her outfit, I actually did have a plan in mind, so I will be showing you that later. I decided to stick with a very pastel and gold color scheme. I have some plans on dolls that I want to work on in the future which require a different style for the face, so if you guys are interested in seeing those dolls, don't forget to subscribe. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. So looking into my box of dolls, I decided to go with a Draculaura since I have a lot of those and she does have a pastel skin tone. Since a lot of these dolls are from lots that I have bought, some of them do not have very good joints. This doll, as you can see, had elastic joints. So I decided to switch her head with a better body. But before we can start customizing, we need to clear off her head, so I use my sharp pair of scissors to cut off her hair as close to the scalp as possible. Like most of my stockbox dolls, she didn't have the best hair, so I decided to cut it off and not save it. Another reason I decided to use this Draculaura head was because her face up was already starting to peel off. So in order to fix that, I decided to wipe off her whole face using my 100% pure acetone. I also used the acetone to wipe off the black paint that was on her head. Since I will be giving this doll more animal-like ears, I cut off her existing ears using my sharp X-Acto knife. I was really worried about the horn accidentally breaking off, so I decided to give it a secure base by using some wire in order to secure it from the inside of her head. In order to create a strong base for the horn to hold onto, I used this thick wire and use it to plunge it into the doll's head and create a loop in the inside in order for it to hold on. I start by roughly measuring how long I want the horn to be and cutting off a piece. Then I use my round tip pliers to create a loop that will hold the horn from the inside. I could have simply put a wire into the doll's head and molded the horn around it so I could remove it before moving on to the face up, but I really didn't want to add the horn after doing the face up because I'm always afraid that I might crack it. Plus this seemed like a more secure option. And after making the wire base, I stick it through the inside of the doll's head. Then I trim the wire and use some Fabri-Tac to glue it from the inside. Next, I take some epoxy to sculpt out a horn for the doll. I mix a small and equal part of A and B in order to have enough to make the horn and some ears. Sculpting out the horn actually took me quite a while, so I will be skipping through the footage a little bit, but for the most part, I ended up just taking a small bit of epoxy and sculpting out a rough horn shape and then I let it sit for a few hours before returning back in order to create some lines going around the horn. Another hobby of mine is making polymer clay charms, which I actually did before I got into doll customizing, so I use this clay tool that I had for that and create some swirls around the horn. Next, I move on to sculpting some ears for the doll. I did want these to be removable because it was going to be easier when I move on to making the hair, so I take equal parts and place them in the rough area where I wanted the ears to go and slowly sculpt them while referencing a picture of horse ears. I didn't worry about making them symmetrical because I was going to add flocking around the outside of the ears. And here are the horn and ears all complete and next I just let them fully cure before moving on to the face up. In order to make sure I get the placement of the ears right when I reattach them, I use a sharpie to outline the shape of the ears on the head and mark them using left and right. Moving on to her outfit, I actually did have a plan for this doll's outfit. I wanted her top to be very elegant and flowy, so I went with this high-low dress with some metallic leggings underneath. And because she is a unicorn, I decided to give her some fluffy boots. Since her leggings will be semi-stretchy, I decided to use this pattern of Ever After High pants. I actually had to redo these pants one more time because the first pair of pants that I'm showing you now came out quite large on the doll, and as I kept trying to modify them to fit the Draculaura body, they just wouldn't fit right, so I decided to scrap it and start again. But the second pair of pants did come out a lot better, and they fit the doll really well. And here are the pants all complete. In order to create the half mesh, half solid top that I wanted for this dress, 
I ended up just altering a pre-existing pattern that I had. The top two left pattern pieces are the ones that I use normally for my regular dresses, and I ended up just giving them higher necks, which are the two pieces underneath those. So in order to create this style of top, I use a mesh fabric to cut out this full front piece, and I use a solid fabric for the crop top pattern. It's a little difficult to explain the instructions for this, but I do show you what pieces I end up cutting out later on. For the high-low portion of this dress, I made my own pattern piece, so if you guys want to recreate this, these are the measurements that I made. If you guys do recreate this, the measurement that says 4 centimeters is where the fabric fold should go in order to not have a seam right down the front middle part of the dress. And I gave 10 centimeters around the waist to give a rough gathering effect. Here is a better idea of how I made the top portion of this dress. As you can see, I just layered the mesh fabric with the solid fabric. Since it is hard to sew mesh together, I decided to use Fabri-Tac to attach the shoulders together, as well as attaching the sleeves. I also decided to add a bit of a solid half sleeve to this dress, which are those two solid pieces on each side of the sleeve. Then I go ahead and sew the top closed, turning it right side out so I can get it ready to attach to the bottom portion of this dress. Then I cut out some glittery tool to attach to the waist of this dress. I ended up cutting some square pieces as you can see like this, which didn't work well on this dress because it just created a tube around her, which I ended up having to cut into slits. As you can see here, it laid around the waist, but I cut out these slits so that it would not prevent the dress from poofing out. After attaching the tool and gathering the waist of the skirt, I go ahead and attach it to the top. Then I finish up this dress with a rainbow ribbon around the waist. I kept her accessories pretty simple. I used this color shift paint to repaint this blue Draculaura necklace, and I painted her nails purple. Since I was going to be covering these boots using yarn wefts, I didn't want to use a pair that had a lot of detail, so I went with these purple Monster High boots. I was going to keep the boots at this slight angle, but it didn't make sense after adding the wefts. So to make these boots, I repainted them using white acrylic paint, and then I glued on yarn wefts going from bottom to top. And to give them a bit more detail and so that they can match the dress, I added this rainbow ribbon. Finally, moving on to the face up, I go ahead and blush the face like I normally do, using a darker shade of pink pastels this time on the cheeks, forehead, and nose, and lips, and around the horn. I also add purple pastels near the cheek leading up towards her horn around the eye. I went pretty heavy with the pastels this time because I wanted her face up to be very colorful. So I also added blue near the outer corner of her eye and later on I also add yellow to the inner corner of her eye. Here I am also adding the pastels to her lips which I do go over a little bit later and I also use the pastels to blush her nose. After the initial blushing, I used my pink watercolor pencil to add definition to her lips. The first thing I sketch in with a light brown watercolor pencil is the top part of her eye because it tells me where the placement of the eye should be and it lets me make sure that both eyes will be even. Next, I fill in the rest of her eye using a white watercolor pencil. Before spraying another layer of MSC, I go ahead and add the top eyelashes using the same light brown watercolor pencil. At this point, I was actually debating whether or not I wanted to restart because when I added the top eyelashes, it looked really weird to me, but I kept going and it ended up fixing itself. After a second spray of Mr. Super Clear, I take a darker shade of brown pencil and go over the eyelashes. I chose to use a darker shade of brown because at this point I still wasn't sure whether or not I was going to use black on this doll's face up. Since her color scheme was going to be very pastel, I didn't want the black to make her face up feel heavy. Taking the same pink pencil I used for her lips, I draw in her waterline. This doll actually has a very similar eye shape to my recent steampunk doll because I actually repainted their faces at the same time. I also add a crease to her eye using a brown pencil. Since I completely forgot to record how I did my steampunk doll's eyebrows, here I am showing you how I made this doll's eyebrows from the very beginning. This is still my second layer of MSC, I just haven't re-blushed the face because I knew that this was when I was going to add eyebrows, so I didn't want to leave any streaks if I added another layer of pastels. 
I usually do the right side of the doll's face first because I end up getting a better shape that way. So what I do is I basically use my pencil to show me where it would line up across the face and I make dots and go from there. I left her eyebrows pretty much in this very thin stick shape because I knew I wanted to add blue and maybe I was going to use black so I didn't want the layer underneath of this light brown to complicate me adding the colors later. I probably should have done this before I even started the face up but here I am using acrylic paint to repaint her horn. I start with a pink color at the base of her horn. Then I move on to white and at the very tip I use gold. After another spray of Mr. Super Clear, I finally use my black watercolor pencil to go over the eyelashes. The reason I decided to finally use black on this face up was because I felt like black really can't be beat on saturation and I felt like even a dark shade of brown wasn't going to be as vivid as the black would. And it also provided a really nice contrast to the pastels that I layered on her face. I was really worried about the saturation of the pastels also because of how light they were. I wanted to make sure that they were noticeable from a distance and in photos. So that's why I decided to use black. Moving on to the eyebrows, usually whatever color I use for the top eyelashes and bottom eyelashes is the color I use for the ends of the eyebrows. So I start by using the black on the outer edges of the eyebrows and then I move on to a light gray and then for the very center of the eyebrows I use a light blue. Moving on to the bottom eyelashes, I follow the same technique I usually do for all my dolls which is basically drawing around the waterline. I try to make sure that the line is very thin because this is the bottom eyelashes and I don't want to make them feel heavy and then I add a few triangular eyelashes. And before spraying another layer of MSC, I go ahead and add some Pearlex powder. Here I am finally adding the pupils to her eyes. As you can see, the colors are pretty vivid at this point. Before I started on the pupils, I did go over the pastels and some of the colors in her eyebrows and eyes. As you can see, the yellow towards the inner corner of her eyes is very vibrant because I went in with a pencil and not a pastel. I use gray in order to make sure I get the placement of the eye right, but later on I will add color to her pupils. Since this is towards the end of the face up, I go ahead and brighten colors and add highlights and shadows where they are needed. The areas I tend to focus on when adding white pencil highlights is under the eyebrows, the inner corner of the eyes, and the upper lip on the cupid's bow. And to really make her eyes pop, I also highlight a few of her eyelashes. The final step of this doll's face up is to add darker colors to her pupils, so I start by outlining her pupil with a black pencil. I use a black pencil for the center part of her eye, purple for the bottom, and I also add black to the top. Actually, this is the final step to this doll's face up, which is adding eyebrow hairs to the center part of her eyebrows. Moving on to her hair, these are the colors I decided to use. I mostly stuck with the ombre ones that go from a pink to a blue color. Since the top part of her hair was going to be pink, I wanted her ears to stand out so I painted them white and here I am adding a light layer of blue before adding white blocking. This is actually the first time I've ever made ears for a doll so it was kind of fun. Next, taking my trusty glue gun, I start gluing on some hair starting from the back of her head. I started by adding some blue wefts, then I moved on to the ombre wefts, and then I finally finished off the top of her head with full pink wefts. After I finished gluing on all the wefts and making sure that I left space for the ears, I finally glue on the ears using some Fabri-Tac glue. I actually really liked how flowy her hair looked from the front, but since I had plans on adding glitter around her face and near her horn, I had to make sure that her hair was pulled back, which is why I ended up going with this simple hairstyle. Another interest that I had before I got into doll customizing was actually face painting. I really liked the way the chunky glitters looked in the pixie paint, so I mixed it in with some glossy Mod Podge in order to create the glitter that I wanted to put around her horn and the side of her face. Before I added the glitter, I also glossed her horn, lips, and waterline with Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. I actually have different variations of these pixie paints, so they may make a reappearance in future customs. Here she is with her face completely done. The next thing I do is dress her and reattach her head to the body before taking final photos. 
The snow has really been piling up, so I thought I'd take advantage of a nice snowy relaxing background. So here she is in front of some big snow piles, and I think she looks absolutely adorable. I love the glitter on her face. She definitely takes the cake in terms of taking pictures of her. I took a lot of pictures of her because I just couldn't get a perfect angle because she just had so many angles I could take pictures of. So these are my favorite pictures of her. I definitely have more, but I will be posting those on Instagram if you want to check them out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and joining me in another doll customizing video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new and want to see more of my custom dolls in the future. If you guys want to see more pictures of this unicorn doll, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I have it linked in the description box below. Let me know what you guys think of this doll in the comments below, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask them. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.